Thanks for joining us at Pineapple Racing. This week we're going to show how to replace a pilot bearing and seal properly. The pilot bearing should be replaced on every engine overhaul and also a very good idea on every clutch replacement. If you don't replace it and it fails, not only do you have to do a tremendous amount of work to get back in there, but also you can do a tremendous amount of damage to the transmission and even worse, is if the pilot bearing does completely go bad, it's possible it will seize itself into the back of the eccentric shaft. You might have to disassemble the engine entirely to replace the eccentric shaft. Now let's take a look. The pilot bearing is press fit into the back of the eccentric shaft here. And as you can notice in this case, we see the pilot bearing right here. But what we should have is the pilot bearing, and on top of that is a dust seal to keep the oil in it and keep the dust out so that it doesn't fail early. The input shaft of the transmission nests into the seal and the bearing and it acts for alignment of the front of the transmission. In this case, the rollers are still in this pilot bearing, as you can see in this new one, but frequently you'll take these apart and everything will be rusty and you won't find any of the rollers. And this can be really nasty because it can also destroy the front of the transmission. And this is the beginning of the amount of heat that it takes to get the outside of the bearing to actually bond itself to the eccentric shaft. And at that point, there's almost no way to take it out. This is a factory pilot bearing puller. This is by far the best tool. Most of the aftermarket two-jaw pullers don't seem to work very well. This particular tool, as you notice, has three jaws and it does a wonderful job of grabbing the pilot bearing so that you can pull it out. It takes a substantial amount of force to remove that bearing and the two jaw pullers just deflect and pull right through without removing the bearing. Factory pilot bearing tool, you want to make sure that this edge fits in all the way and gets behind the pilot bearings. And slide it in being careful not to let the heavy weight here drop down onto your fingers. And then it's just a matter of threading the puller. Now, when it gets close to getting tight, remember to move it a little bit. There's a small gap in the back that you want to make sure the puller sits in so it's fully behind the bearing and does not get trapped on the edge of the eccentric shaft. Once you've tightened the puller fully, then we can go ahead and slide hammer the pilot bearing out. Now that we've got the pilot bearing removed, let's take a look at preparing the bore so we can put another pilot bearing in here and make it last. First thing we're going to do is wipe out the surface, removing all dirt and grease. In the process, we're also going to take a peek, especially in the very bottom of the bore, make sure that there's no particles, no rollers, no pieces left, possibly from a previous pilot bearing failure. Next thing we're going to do is get in and check the bore. It should be smooth all the way around. If it is not, we're going to take an extra careful look and decide whether that wear is enough or the defects are enough that it might damage the new pilot bearing going in and the replacement pilot bearing may not last very long. This is the factory pilot bearing installation tool. Comes with a main driver, spacer ring. Spacer rings there so when we do drive the bearing in and it stops against the back of the eccentric shaft that we have the correct depth to leave room for our pilot bearing seal. We'll start just slipping the pilot bearing on, making sure that it's square and true and just lightly tap it in. 
I use a slight downward pressure of my hand to keep the tool from bouncing. We're trying not to damage the pilot bearing as we're installing it. So light, small hits are better than just a few very, very hard hits. Hear the tone change? That means the pilot bearing is fully installed. We'll remove the spacer. And now we'll install the seal. Do not try to install the pilot bearing and seal together. You will crush the seal. The seal, it's very important that you take a look at it to determine which is the front and the rear. This side here, with the small gap at the edge, is the inside or the rear portion. And this will take just a few light, easy taps. Again, that downward pressure. We're fully installed. Final step. Remember, use a good grease. I like synthetic. This is royal purple. And make sure that you lubricate the bearing and the seal well. But do not over lubricate the bearing and seal. If you do, when you go to put the transmission on, the grease will hydraulic the shaft and instead of going in gently as this does, you'll try to push it in and the grease will try to push the tranny back off. It'll be very difficult to get the transmission aligned well and you might damage the brand new parts. If you found during your inspection that the pilot bearing bore was too badly damaged and you can't reuse it, in the past this would have required a complete engine tear down the replacement of the eccentric shaft costing thousands of dollars. We now have a new specialty tool that will allow the repair to be done in the car without engine removal. Our tool threads onto the back of the eccentric shaft and allows a precision boring of the eccentric shaft to allow an oversized bearing thereby saving you thousands and thousands of dollars and can be done in as little as half an hour. Thanks for joining us. These weekly videos can be found on rotaryengineillustrated.com and the pilot bearing or any of the other specialty tools that you've seen here can be found at pineappleracing.com.